Hello guys, in this video I will show you how you can run Linux desktop GUI applications in a Docker container on Windows. There are basically two ways to accomplish that and in both cases you will need some kind of XServe application running on Windows. A good open source one is VCX Surf. the download link is in the description. And I have already installed it and got this XServe launcher up here on my desktop. So the first thing you, you will need to do is to start the XServe. So let's do this quickly. Multiple windows, that's okay. Start with no client and we leave the extras also on default. Finish. That's it. X server is running and good to go. Next thing you will need to start your Docker container. As you can see, I don't have any Docker images here in my Docker desktop, so let's create one from scratch. And I have already prepared an empty Docker file in an empty folder. Let's open the Docker file in Visual Studio Code. But you can use any text editor, it doesn't actually matter. Let's also open the workspace here and use my cheat sheet. All right, so the first thing you will need to do, you will need to get a base image. And here I am getting the Ubuntu latest image, and then we will customize it further. First thing, update the repositories and then install some GUI apps, like for instance, <laughs> not you, Microsoft. For instance, the PCMan FM, a very basic file manager, then Fedapad, a basic text editor, Alex Task, it's a basic um, task manager, and the X Terminal. And now that we have our GUI apps, we need to tell Linux where to display the GUI. On this Ubuntu image, this is easy, we just need to point the display environment variable to the previously started X server on Windows. So what you will need to write is env and display and point it for instance to the windows host ip address like this one or we can use a special dns name host.docker.internal which resolves to the internal ip address used by the windows host and then after we get the ip address write a colon and then display number 0.0, .0. this is where the X server on Windows listens to. The only thing left is to start our GUI application and I will start PC man FM. Docker file is ready and now we need the terminal. This one opens PowerShell in the right folder and to build the image write docker build dash t then the name of the image, I'll name it docker GUI and a dot for the current folder. That's it. Enter. It can take a few minutes and it's, it's done. So let's check docker desktop. Here is our image and let's run it. Run. All right. Here is our PC man FM running in the docker container and displaying on Windows. It's running as root. So if you need, you can do further adjustments from here. Like for instance, let's edit some configurations with the previously installed Fedapad. And if I try to edit something, I can do it without any restrictions. Also the nice thing is that drag and drop works. And one additional thing, you can also run additional GUI applications from PCMan FM from within the GUI, like when you do tools and run a command, you can do something like lx task and it will it will run it or even run x terminal it runs the terminal who am I? I'm root that means I can install something let's say install htop all right htop here it is htop running very nice. So this is one way to display GUI apps by setting the display variable to the IP address of the host and then launching the GUI application. The second way is to connect to the container using SSH, launch the app and display the app on Windows using X11 forwarding. The solution in addition to the X server running on Windows also requires a SSH client application on Windows. A good one is Putty. It's already installed on my machine and the download link is in the description. So let's see how this works. I will duplicate 
the docker file here and call it dockerfile.ssh we don't need any of that and for the base image here we will use the previously built docker GUI image and then do further adjustments from here. First we will update the repositories again and then we will install the open SSH server. After the SSH server is installed we need to configure it. Let me just quickly paste the commands in. So first we will enable the x11 forwarding by setting it to uh, yes and then we will disable the x11 use localhost by setting it to no both in the sshd config file. When using SSH, it is not recommended to allow connections as the root user, and therefore we will, we will add another user. Let me just copy the command here, and we will connect as this second user. So here I am adding another user called test user and setting the password to 1234. A oh, very secure one. Right. Next thing, we need to expose the SSH port 22 and run the command. So for the command, we will just start the SSH service and basically just wait for the incoming connections. So let's just launch the bash console here so the container stays in the loop and waits for the connections. That's it. Let's build this Docker image, docker gui-ssh and the docker file is dockerfile.ssh and build it in the same folder. Make sure to save the file, it's also very important. Built. All right, done. Let's check docker desktop and here it is. All right, let's run it. Here, one thing. We need to map the exposed 22 port of the container to our local host port 22 so we can connect through the local host to the container. Let's run it. All right, container is running, but this time no app was launched. That's because we just started the SSH service and now the Docker container just waits for incoming connections. So how do we connect to the container? We will use PowerShell again and Patis P link.exe tool so that is one of Patti's tools we will connect as the test user at local host and the very secure password 1234 and then the minus x option this enables the x11 forwarding and the app we want to launch pcman fm for instance all right access granted and here it is pcman fm this time it's running as the test user and it launched in the test user home directory. So that means we don't have root access and if we try to edit a file here, a configuration file, and try to save it, as you can see, we don't have permission to save it. But we can still run additional GUI applications from within PCMan.fm. Let's try to run X terminal. Here it is. Who am I? I'm test user. So the nice thing about SSH about this SSH method is that we can create multiple connections and launch multiple GUI apps within the same container. But <laughs> we can launch it from here. But not many apps can launch additional apps from within their GUI like PCMan FM can do. So that's more of an exception than a rule. The usual way how you would do this is by launching another PowerShell console here. And again, using plink, launch another application. Let's try LX task. Access granted. And here it is. Let's try another one. Fedapad, access granted. And here is Fedapad. And also, the nice thing is that drag and drop also works even if it's launched from a different uh, SSH session. So, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, give a thumbs up, leave a comment and also subscribe if you want to see more content like this and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. So see you in the next one. Bye.